Hi everyone, I'm Dana Kohut, founder of the Prime U series of interviews with top business and technology leaders. Today my guest is Shahar Bar, Senior Vice President of Video Products and Corporate Development at Harmonic. Harmonic is the global leader in video technology delivery and services. Shahar, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. It's a great pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. My first question is about your technology background. You've been working at Harmonic for over 22 years, which is quite rare nowadays. So tell us what's so special about Harmonic and about your steps uh, in your career that have led you to your current position and what are you responsible for? Yeah, sure. So you're right. I have been uh, with the company with Harmonic for over 20 years and uh, I started out in R&D and engineering. I later moved on into product marketing roles, um, got very involved in a lot of our mergers and acquisitions, and we were quite active. Uh, um, there was a period of a few years where we did quite a few mergers and acquisitions. Today, I oversee the, um, the video division. We have two main divisions in the company. I oversee the video division from a product perspective, from a business development perspective, from a strategy perspective, as well as all our corporate development efforts. So it's a, it's a bigger role in essentially overseeing the the video side of the business. Shahar, in almost every interview, I ask my guests about innovations, and they all agree that without the right people, innovations are impossible. So my question to you is, what kind of people you're looking to bring to your teams in order to foster the right innovation culture? Sure. You know, first, for, for me personally, when I interview into my team, I think I always look for a couple of traits. Um, and it's important to note that Harmonic is truly a global company. We have over 1,500 employees and less than 20% are in the United States. So we have a very large uh, percentage of uh, employees all across the globe in Asia, and in Europe, the Middle East and uh, North and South America. So the one thing that I find that is very key for innovation is to find people which have two traits. One is creativity, a very creative individual, and two is a little bit disruptive or a little bit of a background of an entrepreneur, um, which basically means that you're a little bit looking for disruption. And I think that those are very key because technology evolves so rapidly and having that ability to disrupt, to look at things differently is very key to keeping an innovative culture. That is very interesting, Shahar. Actually, while researching um, Harmonic and your profile, I could see that you have five main R&D centers across the globe. You are in France, US, Israel, in Ukraine, in Kiev, and also in Hong Kong. So um, I would be really keen to know, how do you maintain this high, highly innovative spirit in this distributed environment? It's a good question. So we definitely have developed an international R&D force, um, which is over 600 uh, engineers. And uh, it is, as you mentioned, in five different main locations. Um, and first, to get that to work, um, we adapted some of the tools that everybody's now familiar with, such as Zoom, uh, Dropbox, Box.com, Jira, and so on. Those are tools that we adapted five, six years ago, long before we ever heard of COVID-19. Uh, and we've been using those tools extensively. So to some extent, uh, while many companies, it was the first time they only started them in 2020, uh, we were actually very, very familiar with all of them. So that helped, I would say, the infrastructure of collaboration and working together. But that doesn't answer your question about how do you get innovation and how do you get that uh, creativity there? And what, I, what we found over the years and with engineers, again, from many different cultures, different backgrounds, we find that there's one common thing. The engineers love to work on the latest technology. And if you give the engineering teams an opportunity to work on breakthrough technology, on the cutting edge of what they're doing in the industry, they get exceptionally excited, exceptionally motivated, and they tend to accelerate their development and their innovation. And that seems to be the biggest, the biggest common theme across all of them. Doesn't matter from an engineer born in Kiev, an engineer born in Hong Kong, or an engineer born on the West Coast here in the US. They all love to work on the latest tech. Many agree that the biggest challenge for streaming content over internet is the lack of sufficient bandwidth. 
I would be specifically interested in how do you at Harmonic, how do you uh, tackle this challenge and what kind of solutions you offer to your clients? Well, it's, it's a huge challenge and it's one that we've been dealing with, uh, let's say bandwidth challenges for many years as a company. Uh, in the old days, 20 years ago, it's how to, man how to manage satellite bandwidth as much as optimize or how to manage your spectrum and your physical bandwidth in a cable infrastructure. But today in the world of streaming, we manage it in two different ways. On one hand, we have our cable division, which develops a software oriented broadband solution for cable networks. And being software actually turned out to be very significant value in uh, during the pandemic because the ease to increase capacity just essentially meant just increasing your software setup, which is much easier than physical deployments. And that made a huge difference. So the fact that we run a software based broadband architecture made it uh, very, very helpful for a lot of our cable customers during the pandemic. On the other hand, the other part of streaming is the content itself the actual movies, the videos we're watching, the live sporting events. And in that area, we developed a technology to try to minimize the bandwidth that flows on the networks. And we actually utilize artificial intelligence to do that. So we use AI to basically compress or squeeze the video to a smaller file size while making it in a way where humans cannot detect it. So the human eye won't be able to detect the changes. And that technology is developed together with artificial intelligence, with machine learning. And that technology has been deployed very, very rapidly in 2020 during the pandemic. I can see that many of your offerings at Harmonic are either integrated or connected with the cloud. Could you share with our readers Harmonic's journey to the cloud? When did you realize that, that was the next big thing in technology and how your products have, ev have evolved in order to leverage all the benefits the cloud had to offer? Uh, okay, it's a great question. I think we started, uh, the, the main transition I would say was around seven, eight years ago. We started looking at our next generation technology. And in that next generation technology, we made a decision which at the time may have seemed a little bit uh, uh, premature, but we decided to bet on the technology of containers, microservices, and Kubernetes. While today that may seem obvious, it was absolutely far from obvious back then. It, uh, it wasn't very clear that those were the dominant technologies of the future. We chose those technologies because we felt that we could use them for our existing customers when we deploy that same technology, but on a, in an appliance that we ship to the customer on a software and a server but we also can deploy that technology in the public cloud for what I call the innovators, those early adapters in the market that were willing to try and test the media and the video workflows in the public cloud. So we, we cycled, we focused on one software stack using containers, microservices, and Kubernetes infrastructure that we could basically deploy service both our traditional customers who wanted traditional servers, as well as the new adapters who were willing to try things in the cloud. While it seemed like a big, bold decision and there was a lot of pros and cons and going in different directions, we did go with that decision. And today it pays dividends because it's very clear that the cloud is the dominant platform of the future for many, many uh, industries, not just uh, the media industry. And we are seeing, and that is probably the fastest growing product we have in the video division is basically the cloud adoption. And it's and all of it is based on that microservices. So I would say that big decision we took seven, eight years ago was foundational. 